From one of the most iconic fruits being removed, to secret locations you've never heard of. Here is everything that changed in Update 20 and Blocks Fruit. For Update 20, Blocks Fruit's developers really said let's rework everything, which is why they changed most, if not all, swords in this update. I'm not talking about only the design, but also their skill sets as well as animations that play out for each skill. They look way better now and will have your character looking like a pro. So try those out with the swords you have laying around, even if you thought they weren't that good. You might like them now, who knows? Another great addition is a brand new island that has been added to the third sea. It's called Tiki Outpost and it's filled with a bunch of new NPCs. Five to be more precise. You can grind on it only if you're above level 2450. There are four enemies on this island called Isle Outlaw, Island Boy, Isle Champion, and Sunkissed Warriors. It's basically the final island in the whole game. Stick to the end of the video to find out what you can do in it. You might think, oh, they only added one new island, but you probably didn't know they reworked some of the old islands as well. Well, the majority of these island reworks have been done for the islands in the first and second sea, with their overall quality now being much better, which is to make sure that new players enjoy the game even more than before. Even though some of the changes didn't appear yet, it's expected that the majority of them will become visible later in the coming months. We all know that the level cap before this update was 2450. In fact, it stayed the same for almost an entire year since update 17.3.5 came out. But in update 20, it was increased by 100. So now the current level cap is 25. 50. Imagine being the first one to reach that level. The first and most obvious change you will notice as soon as you join the game is new fruit design. Not only do fruits look different, but they're literally animated, and the graphics look so good. Each fruit obviously has an animation that represents it, and the most interesting ones are definitely Phoenix and Spider Fruit. Phoenix flaps its wings, and the spider fits into the Halloween vibe. Oh, and Spring Fruit, it bounces! Speaking of new fruits, the biggest change Update 20 brought was definitely two new fruits. The first one is called Mammoth, a beast type fruit that costs 2.7 million belly. It's mythical and its abilities sound pretty interesting. The first ability is called Ancient Cutter and it turns you into a mammoth covered in a dark aura, then stomps on the ground and sends three large slashes. It's similar to Dragon's Transformed X move through the ground and air. This move can even be used in the air and it looks pretty interesting. The second move transforms you into the same mammoth, but instead of stomping on the ground, it dashes forward at a high speed and when you hit an enemy, it launches them upwards, which looks super funny. The third move is similar to the second one and the only difference is that it doesn't transform you into a mammoth and when the enemy is hit they're slammed down. The fourth move transforms you into an armored mammoth which reduces damage by 50%. It also gives you a different jump and dash animation along with the ability to deal damage by falling to the ground when airborne. This is definitely the best move. And the fifth move is basically a huge jump similar to Buddha's C move. Also the longer you hold it the further you jump. And best of all you can literally hold it infinitely. The second fruit is called sound fruit, a natural type of fruit that costs 1.7 million belly and has been classified as legendary. Sound is a great choice for both grinding and PvP, and all of its abilities are AoE. Its first ability is called Rhapsody Notes, and it shoots out three projectile notes on the first use horizontally, five on the second use horizontally, and five on the third use vertically where the cursor aims at. You'll get used to it as you start using this move, and all of the notes explode once they hit the target, which deals pretty nice damage. The second move is called Fortissimo, and and it deals an area of effect damage through a cone-shaped note attack. The third move is called Symphonic Radiance, but I'd call it Disco Ball because it literally spawns a Disco Ball that fires beams which auto-aim at all nearby enemies at a large range. Good thing I attended all my hip-hop classes. Once it shoots all the beams, the Disco Ball fires itself to where the cursor is aiming at and explodes on impact. One more thing that makes this move overpowered is that every time a beam hits your enemy, the damage is multiplied by 0.85. The next move shoots five small and then five large projectiles, which also explode on impact. The larger projectiles will literally spawn a black hole and start sucking in all the nearby enemies while dealing damage for a short time after exploding. And the final move is called Prestissimo. What's going on with these names? Fortissimo, Prestissimo, Sparkyissimo? Maybe I should make my own fruit. I'll ask my friends what they think about that. Oh, yeah. Anyways, the Prestissimo move is a flight move that regenerates tempo meter, but stops health and energy generation when it's activated. Overall, this fruit is super good. But beside the fruit, Fruit changes, there are also a few other minor fruit changes that happened. The first of them is Kilo. Well, was Kilo. Now it's Rocket Fruit. Yep, you heard that. I don't know how Kilo managed to survive four years in the game being the worst fruit, but it was finally time to switch it. Kilo's new name is Rocket, and its abilities have completely changed. It's still the cheapest fruit in the game, though. The first ability is a rocket that launches from your hand and deals AoE damage and a knockback. The second ability is just an airstrike, and the third ability is some sort of quick jump, which also deals AoE 
3 damage once you hit the ground. The last move is a flight move which has a cool animation, considering it's from the cheapest fruit. You do a backflip and fly off with an explosive trail. New players definitely won't be complaining about this fruit, but it wasn't the only fruit that got changed. Paw fruit is now called pain fruit, but that's really the only big change, as its abilities are basically the same. Some other fruits got minor changes such as new icons and in-game visuals, but nothing as crazy as rocket fruit. The first and definitely most interesting thing you can do on Tiki Outpost is craft and enchant items. It's also one of the features added in update 20. It allows you to craft scrolls and enchant your swords by visiting the Dragon Talon Sage NPC, which can be found in the Tall Temple on the island. To enchant your swords, you need scrolls. And to make one scroll, you need three fool's gold and two shark tooth. There are six kind of scrolls, but at the moment, the community has only found recipes for three of them, common, rare, and legendary. When you first start crafting scrolls, you can only craft common scrolls. You unlock the ability to craft better ones the more you craft with the previous rarity. Enchanted swords will soon become a must-have. It gives you random bonuses to your weapon, ranging from increased elemental damage or drop rate, to getting vampiric, which heals you when you deal damage. But did you know that this update was super focused on seas? We got six new sea events including raids. The first one is called Treasure Island. It's one of the smallest islands in the game, and it spawns when players move far away from land. There are multiple versions of the Treasure Island, some of them being completely made of sand, some having only grass and dirt, and there's even a version that has both sand and grass with a tree. The second sea event is called Ghost Ship Raid, a sea event in which a few ships spawn and attack your ship with a cannon. These can only be damaged by AoE attacks, so choose the right fruit. The next new sea event is called Flying Piranhas, and this one is scary. The Piranha is a hostile NPC that spawns between 1 to 6 level sea meter. It has wings and can fly outside the water to attack your boat and use electricity based attacks. If you want to kill them, do so with Buddha, because they can get easily damaged with them once. But that's not as scary as the new Terror Shark, which is a level 2000 raid boss. They spawn between sea danger levels 2 to 6. Depending on which danger level you're in, the Terror Shark will be stronger and harder to beat. But don't go past level 5 because Terror Sharks that spawn there are really OP, and you'll need your friends to help. It gives some pretty good rewards though, including up to 25,000 belly, and best of all, leveling you up no matter how high your level is. The next addition is Leviathan, and it's definitely one of the craziest enemies. It's a raid boss that can be found in the Frozen Dimension, and on top of the large building in the Tiki Outpost Island, there's an NPC called the Spy. He provides an origin of the Leviathan, as well as clues to summon it. The last one is called Rough Sea, a randomly spawned sea event that clears surrounding rocks, dims the area inside the sea, and spawns lightning that can damage players and their ships. At the moment, no one knows how we can stay safe from lightning, but hopefully we'll figure it out soon. But even with all these changes, it still feels feels like something's missing. A fighting style? It's definitely not that, because believe it or not, Bloxfruit's developers also decided to add a new fighting style. It's called Sanguine Art, which is extremely powerful, but really difficult to obtain. In order to get your hands on it, you must be on Tiki Island, which means that it's also the final fighting style in the game. On top of that, you must first get a Leviathan's Heart, which you can only get from the Leviathan Sea event. Then go to the basement of the main castle in Tiki Outpost, talk to Shafi, and give him Leviathan's Heart, 20 Demonic Wisps, 20 Vampire Fang, and two dark fragments. Only then you will be able to pay 5 million belly and 5,000 fragments to finally obtain Sanguine Art Fighting Style. Speaking of how good it is, its Z ability launches you where you're aiming your cursor. If you hit your enemy, it'll unleash bat-like creatures on your enemy that will heal you while they deal damage to them. This may be my favorite one from this fighting style, because besides being great for fighting, it's also good for traveling. It drains your enemy's health, breaks instinct, and even has a slight aim assist. The X ability called Scarlet Tear launches 5 slash towards the cursor, leaving claw marks on the floor or walls. This ability has great range, and even greater combo potential. But get ready to hear the name of this last ability, Devourer of Worlds. It launches a dark red blast at the cursor, and when it hits your enemy, it causes four energy balls to spawn around the enemy, and then attack them. But in case you miss and hit no one, those four energy balls will turn into one large energy ball and attack the nearest player. At this point, it would be dumb to rework everything in the game and add new things, but then just leave the boats as they are. Luckily, now we have one new boat called Beast Hunter, and four reworked ones, Lantern, Guardian, Miracle, and Sentinel. The Beast Hunter is a legendary boat equipped with a harpoon that's able to pierce through Leviathan's hard ice and skin. This boat can be obtained by crafting it at the Beast Hunter NPC, and costs 20 Leviathan scales, 6 electric wings, 2 mutant teeth, 30 fool's gold, and 6 shark teeth. I know it seems pricey, but keep in mind that it's impossible to get Leviathan's heart without this boat. The next boat is reworked, and its name is Lantern, a large ship with two cannons on each side and a lantern in the front. It can be bought from the luxury boat dealer for 5,000 belly after you buy it from Cyborg for 1,500 fragments. This boat basically replaced
replaced a flower ship in this update, and that's it. The next one is a Guardian, a boat that replaced Swan Boat, and the only things changed were the size and the name. And the final boat that was reworked is a well-known speedboat, but instead of being named Speedboat, now it's called Miracle. It's been ages since we started hearing rumors about a new weather system, and finally it's here. Well, almost. We're still limited with information, but we now know this system will be used in Tiki Outposts and Sea Events. So does this mean it'll always rain in Tiki Outposts? Who knows? There's a leak that shows rainy weather, but keep in mind that developers also promised us for extreme weather conditions, such as storms, fog, whirlpools, and so on. I can't wait for this to be released. Sure, those freshly reworked swords look fantastic, but a new sword would be even more interesting. And it is! I present to you Shark Anchor, a legendary sword you can only get by being the last person to deal damage to a terror shark with an anchor attached, but only with a monster magnet that can be crafted from the shark hunter. It deals a lot of damage, and all of its moves are AoE, and they deal damage to multiple enemies at the same time. Its Z move makes you spin the sword around on a chain, catch any enemies near you, and then toss them. When your enemy hits an obstacle or reaches its maximum distance, a water eruption spawns below him and then launches him directly into the sky. That's a crazy one even though there's a short cooldown. It still breaks instinct, and its X move launches you forward, performing an uppercut with the sword. Enemies you hit with this move will be dragged along and slammed down, creating an anchor symbol on the ground if performed close to it. It's also recognizable by creating a pink shatter and red slash effect, and apparently it deals more damage if used against big targets. Update 20 also released four new accessories, ranging from hats to necklaces. The first one is called Leviathan Crown, and it's a legendary accessory that's more useful than you might expect. It gives you 12% more damage on melee attacks, 35% more damage on sea events, speeds up health regeneration by 25%, and gives you 40% higher chances of dropping materials from sea events. It even gives you an extra instinct dodge. You can craft it at the Beast Hunter NPC, but the next accessory is Leviathan Shield, which is a mythical accessory that boosts your defense against melee, sword, and gun attacks by 15%, boosts your defense on sea events by 30%, gives you 90% more protection against sea damage, and 1,250 health points. This is so OP! But then comes the Terror Jaw. It's a legendary accessory that grants you 10% more damage on sword attacks, 10% cooldown reduction on any attack, 20% defense on sea events, and 200 energy and 200 health points. You can obtain it from the Shark Hunter and Tiki Outpost. But if you want to be a bit faster, save those shark teeth for the Shark Tooth Necklace. It's a rare accessory that gives you 50% faster sprint speed, plus 10 dash distance, and 25% more damage on sea events. You can obtain it from the same NPC that sells you Terror Jaw, but it's way cheaper. You'll only need one mutant tooth and five shark teeth. Now you may be wondering what all these materials I'm talking about are. They've also been added into update 20, and here's a list of them. Piranha Wing, Fool's Gold, Leviathan Heart, Leviathan Scale, Mutant Tooth, Shark Tooth, Terror Eyes, Monster Magnet. To obtain any of these new materials, you must be above level 2450, or in other words, on Tiki Outpost Island. Once you're there, you need to get in a boat and travel at least 2,700 meters away from it, because that's where you'll hit threat level 6. The higher the threat level, the more sea events will take place, which means you'll face more NPCs, bosses, and enemies from whom you can get these new materials. Keep in mind that as the threat level rises, the enemies you face will also become stronger, so don't immediately go for the highest threat level until you're confident in yourself. To obtain a shark tooth, you will need to kill sharks. Luckily, you can easily identify them underwater. You can get piranha wings from piranhas in the sea, obviously. Mutant tooth and terror eyes are obtained by defeating the terror shark raid boss that spawns during sea events. And I already explained how the leviathan heart is obtained. All you have to do is get out to sea, but equip yourself with some nice fruits because you'll need them. Trust me. Another addition in update 20 is four new titles. The first one is terror bringer. You earn it by defeating 10 terror sharks. The second new title is serpent slayer, and we still don't have a lot of information about this one. We only know that its color is dark blue, and you get it when you kill Levi a certain amount of times. The third new title is Abyss Tamer. You earn it when you clear 50 sea events. And finally, the last one is Nautical Bane, which is just Abyss Tamer, but buffed up, because you'll need to clear 200 sea events to earn this one, and show off its cyan color. To figure out how far you're away from the Tiki Outpost, or in which threat level you are, developers added the Danger Meter. It's a purple ring around your compass, and in my opinion, it's a game changer. Beside all these new additions and reworks, developers also focused on fixing a bunch of bugs and glitches. Unfortunately, some useful and fun glitches that worked before may not work now. But hey, at least our game won't be buggy. Sea events won't spawn on islands anymore. Chests won't be floating in the sea. You won't be able to see Red Barrier in the sky. Kushida door quests will open normally from now on. And many more boat and fruit issues the game had are fixed. There you go. Those are all the changes Update 20 brought us. Don't forget to subscribe and click this video on the screen.